Chesterfield, the centre of industrial England, the gateway to the peak, a town with a rich and varied history. Seen here from the south, Chesterfield has a population of 100,000 and it's an important part of the industrial midlands where the steel, coal and farming industries meet. The town hall, completed in 1938. With its six stone pillars, it's a most distinctive building, almost identical to Stormont, the former seat of government in Northern Ireland. Revolution House. This quaint thatched cottage, formerly known as the Cock and Pynot Inn, is where the Earls of Derbyshire and Danby, with John Darcy, plotted the glorious revolution of 1688, which of course resulted in James II being dethroned and replaced by William and Mary of Orange. Chesterfield's proud of its civic theatre. First opened in 1879, it's now the oldest repertory company in the country, and it's been instrumental in the shaping of the careers of international stars such as Diana Rigg, Edward Fox, Penelope Keith, Wilfred Bramble and Margaret Tysack. One of the oldest buildings in the town centre is Ye Old Royal Oak. Now a public house, it dates back to the reign of Richard I and it's thought to have been a resting place for his crusaders. The Market Hall and Market Square have, for some 800 years, been the focal point of the town centre. For three days each week, on the square stand some 260 market stalls, making it the largest open-air market in the country. Last, but by no means least, the famous Crooked Spire. Towering 228 feet, the spire of the parish church of St. Mary and All Saints dominates the local skyline and features on many of the products and industries of the town. The church, consecrated in 1234, took a hundred years to complete and is now the largest church in Derbyshire. Well, we've set the historical scene and now, today, the 12th of November 1981, Chesterfield will witness a further entry in the history of England as Prince Charles and Princess Diana of Wales visit Chesterfield, their first official visit to an English town since their wedding just 12 weeks ago.
A hundred thousand citizens of the town and surrounding countryside thronged the streets to welcome the royal visitors. For the Hart Hill Morris men, it was to be the second time this year they had entertained royalty. While the crowds waited for the royal couple, the Morris men polished their performance. The crowds continued to grow. With three hours to go, police estimated there were already 80,000 lining the route. Only a week before, the nation had been delighted by the news that the princess was expecting a baby. She had cancelled several engagements in other areas, and now there was anxiety amongst the crowds that they too might be disappointed. The famous spire is constructed of wood with a lead covering. Despite the sometimes wild conjecture over the years about the cause, the explanation of the crooked spire is very mundane. It was caused simply by unseasoned timber.
The princess's love of children is well known. 15,000 of them had been brought in by coach, but they still had a two and a half hour wait. The William Rhodes School Brass Band are national champions. While they waited, senior citizens and disabled people enjoyed the music of these talented young people. Inside the new pavement shopping centre, the proprietors and staff of the shops with their families made final preparations for the walkabout which the royal couple were soon to make. The beaming face of the mayor, councillor Mrs. Sissy Sargent, somehow summed up the delighted anticipation of everyone as the cheering signalled the royal visitor's arrival.
For the Duke and Duchess of Devonshire, it was their first meeting with the wife of the future king. And it was also a day that seven-year-old Diane Johnson will never forget. The inverted mace had a special significance. It's carried upside down only in the presence of royalty.
project gave us the new facilities that we needed. Today, your Royal Highnesses will see the, the results of those developments. The market hall has been extended and fully modernised. The two market squares, Bristol, and the car park will be built to the rear of this development. We are particularly glad that Her Royal Highness, the Prince Edward Way, has agreed formally to all the people and heritage centre. The development represents a great team effort. The team of those who have put their faith into the scheme, those who have implemented the proposal, the tenants, and not least, the cooperation and support of the general public, who experienced considerable inconvenience during the last three years, demonstrate what can be done with optimism, business enterprise, and goodwill. The conservation of growth has, in terms of appearance and scale, retained the respect and confidence of all generations of the town, a vital factor in our original, and I am sure, our future deliberations on development. The Mayor has referred to the last visit of the Prince and Prince of Wales. The people of Chesterfield will have an early opportunity to welcome your Royal Highnesses again and if not, perhaps another member of your family. Stay with us and hope that you will find your day a rewarding one. And last the words from the Mayor to present you with a gift from the people of Chesterfield and hope it will be a lasting reminder of this visit that she will end. From the people of Chesterfield, one of the tokens of their esteem, an inscribed piece of crown dog. Lindsay Smith and Andrew Burton weren't content simply to present their bouquet. They placed a kiss simultaneously on the royal cheeks.
At the Peacock Heritage Centre, staff waited for the princess to unveil a commemorative plaque. Herr Bentz and Monsieur Lemoyne, the representatives of Chesterfield's twin towns, Darmstadt in Germany and Troyes in France, had come to Derbyshire for the day. And they had their long journeys rewarded when they were presented to the prince and princess. The new market hall facade cost two and a quarter million pounds and it was designed to blend with the pavement's shopping centre. <laughs> 